Nigeria, the road to 2019, a series of programs where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I am Christian Ogodo. Thanks for joining us. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, all the news, comments and analysis that provide unrivaled insights into Nigeria 2019, including... About a year ago, Nigeria's former president Olusha Gwabasanjo wrote to President Muhammadu Buhari on what he called poor performance of the president and the need for a third force, a political party to emerge purposely to liberate the country. But with few months to the February general elections, is there really a political structure within the third force parties such as the SDP and the ADC? Well, will speak to the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, ADC. There is no doubt that another party that Nigerians are currently watching as a fast-growing opposition is the African Democratic Congress. Though the party has been in existence since 2006 and had made little impact in the Nigerian political space, it is coming back with the backing of former President Obasanjo, which has thrown it into major limelight. How ready is the party to grasp power from the ruling APC? Well, now let's speak to Dr. Obadiah Milafia, who is a former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He was also a former special advisor to President Goodluck Jonathan on economic and policy matters. He is currently the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, and he joins me now live in the studios. Dr. Obadiah, nice having you, like always, in our studios. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, and I always say, great nation, good people. Is that your party slogan? No, our party slogan is Arise and Shine. Oh. We normally see ADC Arise and Shine. Oh, oh, A, oh. D, this and C. This is becoming too similar to uh, <laughs> the medium you're right on now, Arise yes. News. Well, definitely it has, it has no correlation, you know, because we too are always rising well, and shining. It means we're of like minds. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nigerians will decipher that by yes. the time you reel out what's re your, you know, uh, coming into this race for. But let's look at your party. It's just standing on a tripod. It's standing on the former glory of the former president of Nigeria, metamorphosing from the third force to today's ADC. Little is known about ADC. What's unique or what's the novelty about your party? ADC actually is the fastest growing political party in Africa, I dare say. Uh, we are one of the younger ones, but within the space, we have actually grown to be number three after PDP and APC. Uh, and uh, we were neck and neck with SDP, but they have gone into one legal tussle and the other. We don't know when they're going to come but out. But three of you, you know, uh, came out from the same embryonic uh, circles. Uh, PT, the People's Trust, SDP, and ADC. You're not mentioning People's Trust? Well, indeed, there are a, f a few others, yes, indeed. but. You know, everyone looks after their own. And uh, my mandate is from the ADC, uh, the African Democratic Congress. And uh, our philosophy and our ethos is to build a new Nigeria uh, under the banner of mobilizing the youth and empowering women. Because those two are the majority in this country. Is it like it's been done now, the market money, something? You know, all the candidates come. They want to build a new Nigeria is a recurring slogan. You know, it's like a broken record. How no, do you want to doing, build? Yeah. We are doing things completely differently. This women thing they are doing is literally trying to bribe people. They know they've performed very badly. They are in power. And they believe the only way out now is to go to Wuse market, Garki market, Nyanya market, and be bribing women hoping that but Nigerians, you call it bribe they call it empowerment well i call it bribe because they should have done it much earlier why is it only now they are doing it they are doing it in order to hoodwink the electorate but nigerians are not fools 
they know that they cannot sell their birthright for a mesh of pottage. But they've been doing it. We've seen how uh, money politics is uh, money. Uh, 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 you, you, you give money and uh, vote, vote uh, buying. Well, again, the ADC itself is opposed to that. We don't like that policy of, you know, monetizing the civic culture and the civic obligation, civic responsibility and duties of all citizens. Uh, but I think the incumbent government has carried it too far. They've gone into what they did or no, shown is, 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 is scandalous. What they did in it is equally scandalous. A lot of money bags descended on it, and they brought the whole armada of federal might and security might, you know, literally killing ants with sledgehammers. This is what they did. A peace-loving small state like Ekiti was descended upon by the federal might to crush any hope of the opposition. So, you know, we are into a different and more dangerous uh, face in our democracy. That is why some of us have come in. Okay. We, we have never defrauded the state. We have never defrauded the state. We have never laid our hands to use violence against innocent people. We are here to give our country back to our people. We are here to dry the tears of, of widows and orphans who have been slaughtered, killed and maimed under the watch of this government. We're going to do things differently. How differently are you going to do things? What are you going to do? What, what are the um, checks that you're going to put uh, in place over the insecurity you know, that is so rife in the Northeast, even though the government says they are, you know, they've technically defeated Boko Haram, but we see the annihilation of uh, men and officers of the Nigerian military, you know, in what you might want to call cold blood murder by these uh, Islamist uh, mm -hmm. insurgents. So what is ADC and you as its presidential candidate or president to be would do differently from what they're doing now? Let me assure you, we have a study group that has been working and thinking deeply on this issue of insecurity. We've mapped out a strategy. We have a, 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 a blueprint on how to tackle it. It would be wrong of me or even foolish of me to lay out this no, to the Nigerians enemies. Nigerians want to know. To the enemies of this no, country. No, you're speaking to Nigerians. You want yes. to convince them why they should follow ADC, why they should follow you. Okay. Why are they not saying, you know, uh, the, 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 the hand of Israel and the voice of Jacob in your candidacy, knowing that it metamorphosed yeah. from a former president of Nigeria, uh, uh, Chief Obasanjo. So o tell o Nigerians o what you are going to do. Obasanjo is a patron, is the patron of the ADC, but you know, he allows us the, the latitude you know, to develop the party the way we want. He's like a father there giving advice from time to time. He doesn't really control the party. Uh, it is a truly democratic party by the name uh, that it has. Look, we understand what is going on. The government of the day doesn't understand. And I'm sorry to say Nigerians don't trust this government to tackle the insecurity. Because there's a lot of suspicion that even uh, there is even Boko Haram in the government. This is the truth of the matter. That suspicion, is why. You say, you yes, suspicion. Yeah. There, and you know, there is never smoke without fire. We are told, and there are mysterious killings going on of former retired, very senior military officials who are allegedly privy to certain information that can be very damaging. That is why they are being taken out in such a callous and wicked manner. We are going to stop all that. We will mobilize the people of this country. And I'm echoing the language of Sir Winston Churchill, the great British wartime war prime minister. We will fight them in the desert, desert. We will fight them in the hills. We will fight them in Zambisa forest. We will fight them in the creeks. We will defeat them. We'll mobilize all our people. We'll put in place technology. We'll take the battle to the enemy. We'll not allow the, the battle, uh, the, the, the enemy to take the battle to us. We are going to defeat them. I can assure you, we will undertake 
total mobilization. They are fighting not a normal war. It is an asymmetrical warfare yeah. using guerrilla warfare mm -hmm. and using a doctrine known as fitna. It's an Arab doctrine of war that I will hound you and pound you for years until you give up. Now, we would like to take the battle to them. We'll mobilize all our people, we'll mobilize our hunters, we'll mobilize our vigilantes, we'll bring back even retired soldiers. We will move to that area, we will close our borders until further notice. Until all our neighbors give us iron cast guarantees that we are not going to have armed mercenaries crossing their borders to kill people the in Nigeria. The border is very porous. Are you going to build a wall if you emerge president we of shall Nigeria? Have Would you build a wall across uh, Nigeria's uh, I borders? I wouldn't go so far as a wall, but we, most people know the primary Why routes. Why would you go so far when uh, we've been told that headsmen from neighboring countries, <laughs> even as far as Sudan, yes. are part of the killer headsmen invading uh, the farms in Nigeria and they communities? Are we are going to register all of them. And all aliens in this country will be fully registered. They're under the ECOWAS protocol, they have three months to stay. After three months, they must go or get a permanent residencies. We are going to enforce that law. We'll take any number of measures. Because for us in the ADC, all human life is precious. The lives of the Nigerian people, of mothers, daughters, sons, are very precious. And, you know, we, we are concerned. Uh, we are going to bring Muslims and Christians together. We'll bring all our communities together. They've always been together, haven't they? Well, the leaders of today have divided us. How? They have, pl they have done all kinds of things. They are playing politics of, politics of bigotry. They are playing politics of ne nepotism. The president is a Muslim and uh, the vice president is a pastor of uh, a very popular church worldwide. Well, uh, I don't know about that. All I know is that there's a lot of bigotry in this government. There's a lot of nepotism. And they've been doing everything to divide us. They are playing a new politics of religion. A lot of peop people believe that what is happening in Nigeria is tantamount to global jihad in our country. That is why we must stop it. This nonsense, this stupidity will be stopped under my watch. And uh, nobody can accuse me of bigotry. We are going to form a people's government, the, a government that will be for all the people of Nigeria. I will not look at your face. I will look at what you have to contribute to Nigeria, not, not your religion, not where you come from. We are going to build a new country and call them excellence and merit. OK, Dr. Obadiah, you, you said uh, when talking about how to secure Nigeria, uh, its land, air, and sea space, you talked yes. about going into the creeks. And you know uh, the challenges uh, people of the Niger Delta have been facing, a uh, uh, most precious resource that they have. They don't have any form of control over it. The PIGB bill, mm -hmm. uh, which has been passed, is yet to become an act. What would you be doing to uh, regenerate the Niger Delta region? Would you um, give the people there and the people of Nigeria the powers to own uh, their own uh, um, economy around them? Talking about mining and the rest. Well, let me just make it very clear. The Mid Niger Delta is very close to my heart. Ken we was Junior, who died earlier this year, was a bosom friend of mine. We discussed with him for hours upon hours, for days and weeks and months, the tragedy that has befallen his people that even led to the death of his father, Ken Sarawiwa. And he died of a heart attack. And, I, I, you know, the, the death and the hanging of his father haunted him for years. And my heart goes out to the people of the Niger Delta. So I will do what all I can for them. First of all, we have to clean up the rivers and the streams. We have to stop all this burning of gas that has destroyed the environment of there. And we will make the That's your economic plan you want yes. to outline now. Yes, because exactly. gas is in abundance than the crude, you know. 
uh, that well, the yes. country's but economy relies on. There's a lot of flaring, flared, yeah. flaring going on, and we're going to put a stop to that because there's enough technology to make sure that you can drill oil without having to flare it to that extent. The oil companies have shortchanged that massively. We will impose a heavy tax on flaring, and that tax will be plowed back to the local communities. There should be a huge amount of, 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 of an endowment fund for all the children of the Niger Delta, free education, free health care, up to doc, uh, free education up to doctoral level and automatic jobs in the oil industry for qualified people there. And I'm going to look at the Niger Delta Development Commission. I am not satisfied at all that the money being poured to it is reflected in what is actually on ground for the people of the Niger Delta. We are going to look at the model again. We are going to double the endowment to the Niger Delta, but we shall make sure that this investment reaches ordinary people. There's still a lot of poverty there. In fact, for example, Akwa Ibom, which is a huge oil state with huge amounts of money, is among the most desperately poor regions of this country. Uh, a lot of fine roads uh, with no judgment against anybody in, in Akwa Ibom. But I talk to, to young people, university students, and so on and so forth, and a lot of the, their greatest fear is lack of jobs. I get desperate I, calls. I think, I think that's uh, universally a Nigerian problem, Not as reeled out, as reeled out no. by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. But I was looking at a situation where I would ask you, you know, when we go, after we return from a break, to reel out some of your economic uh, mm -hmm. policies. I will do that. You get the point, sure. all right? So um, The point I'm making is that the amount of money there should not lead to this level of poverty and this level of youth unemployment the way we are seeing it. There's no justification for it. We can do better than that. Okay, let's look at the ADC. Let's uh, try and underscore the present situation of unemployment in Nigeria, mm -hmm. where the National Bureau of Statistics mm -hmm. says over 20.3 million Nigerians are unemployed. Yes. The aggregation of youths there may be over 90% if a further statistics is yes. done. Yes. Because thousands and thousands of Nigerians are turned out you know, from universities and other tertiary institutions sure. without anywhere to go. Will ADC, how will ADC redress uh, this uh, growing phenomenon? You know, there is one thing that in economic circles in this country we never talk about, full employment. Full employment is a, is a situation where uh, unemployment is not more than 30%. You know, there are many countries like that. Norway, you know, uh, Iceland, uh, um, Qatar, unemployment is as low as 3%. That is considered, in fact, full employment, mm -hmm. you know, because there are some people that no matter what, probably don't want to work uh, and don't wish to work, you know. But I would focus on the goal of full employment. We have pursued a model... Not driven by government. I mean, not no. a government uh, employment here now. Not Where really, we're talking of over 5 million uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, civil servants in Nigeria yes. and in the whole of America that is 10 times the size of this country, yes. both federal, state, and the county or local government employees are less than uh, how many millions? Yeah, about three million, three, 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 three to four, four million. million. That's all. So that's the public service so, in this so country. So what, what economic policy are you really going to drive to save uh, this recurrent expenditure on government? The first thing is that we need to change the model of development. This model of development based on petrodollar rentier economy is no longer sustainable because oil itself is not a heavy employer of labor. Most of the drilling is now down offshore. You just need a heavy machinery and a few people who are trained. They are just school leavers. They're not even graduates uh, to drill the oil offshore. So it doesn't have employ so many people. The pipelines don't need so many people, and so on. So we need to diversify this economy desperately. I would also go for the use of public works approach instead of, you know, just giving a huge contrast to multinational corporations, investors. You, you, you give the contracts uh, to, you know, using direct labor. 
you get local you know uh, co consultants and local contractors and you know uh, allow them to recruit thousands of workers train them and use them on the high roads in public works in public construction that is a, a major step we also need to boost agriculture we also need to boost ICT there are various areas that you can really expand you know uh, employment opportunities we also need to deal with the educational curriculum the, our current educational curriculum puts a heavy emphasis in humanities and social sciences in in china 70 percent of all graduates are in science technology engineering and mathematics only 30 percent are in the humanities in africa we have reversed the equation 70% are in the humanities and arts, and only 30% uh, are in the sciences. Uh, we need to train people and change the curriculum so to equip people with the tools that they need to become employable and to become employers also of labor. How are you going to do this through the educational system? You just said, well, you're going to make 70% engineers, scientists, and the rest, and maybe doctors, and what have you. How about technical education, which is, used to thrive uh, in, in your own time then? No, that is part of it. That is part of it. At the higher level, you have the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. At the media, intermediate level, technical schools. We are going to produce a network of technical colleges throughout this country. Was that not what uh, the monotechnics were meant for, polytechnics and monotechnics? But are they really doing that? I'm not seeing that they're actually doing that, you know. So, and I hear they're all, all, they're all going to become universities. That's what we heard on, on, on the news. I don't know how far it is. But I am not convinced that the, the current government... By the way, they're trying to put more emphasis on studying Arabic than on studying sciences. And I think that is worthless. You know, uh, I live in the Arab world and uh, I speak a bit of Arabic myself, but I don't think the problems of Nigeria have to do with Arabic. The problems of Nigeria to do today is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We are going to use a mix of incentives and direct action to, you know, sway people. Like, for example, if you give full scholarships to all girl students studying science, there will be a full federal government scholarship. That will, you know, drive a lot of people to compete in order to get into science disciplines. And then, of course, you can give half scholarships to the boys if you are studying engineering. We say you don't pay any school fees at all. So that will be a huge incentive for people to go to science, technology, and engineering. And then you improve the industrial training. In Germany, before you graduate, you would have spent almost two years you know, doing tech practical work in a factory, in an industry. So that when you graduate, you can hit the ground running. We need to introduce, introduce those kinds of curricula, you know, to, to help, you know, revamp um, our industrial sector and create jobs for millions and millions of people. Okay, uh, 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 Dr. Know. Obadiah, so you were once uh, a, deputy, a former deputy governor of the central bank. So let's yes. uh, talk some econometrics more now, away from education. Mm -hmm. What will you be doing differently uh, from today's central bank, which uh, seems to be stabilizing the Naira against uh, the dollar and some of the major currencies, which uh, has said that it has reduced Nigeria's food import bills from over $500 million, I think, uh, mm -hmm. monthly or thereabout, to just uh, under 50 million naira today. This administration is claiming the success. Uh, what will your own government, the ADC government, you as president, with your vast experience in econometrics, be doing? Well, you know, I, I think they've done relatively well with regard to the Uncle Borrowers program. But I would ask, at what cost? The cost has been very prohibitive. And at the end of the day, that is not the role of a central, of a central bank. The central bank is getting itself involved in things that don't necessarily concern uh, the central bank. They need to go back to the actual function 
of a central bank, which is anchored on monetary stability, ensuring financial system stability, uh, keeping inflation low, and you know, looking after the Naira and make sure that it is stable and so on. There are a lot of issues that concern me. For number one, I think there's a lot of interference with the work of the central bank. There's a lot of political interference. On paper, our central bank is autonomous. But in practice, there's a lot of political capture. That was what you witnessed that during your own time? No, 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 no. It was far less. There was a bit of it, but it's far more the case. Now, it's very chronic. For example, look, we are keeping almost seven level of exchange rates. Why? So if I know you and you know me, I can give you uh, dollars at 200 to uh, uh, Naira. The government has spent that 305 for the 2019 budget. Well, that is what it says. Then you give some people 200, you give some people even 190, you give some people 305, and then multiple rates for different people. This, this is extortion. And it opens up room for serious corruption. It must be stopped. But you see, the people that are benefiting from that don't want it to stop. And it is the Nigerian economy that is suffering as a consequence. I will do things differently. I will ensure the autonomy of the central bank. You need an autonomous central bank run by professionals who know what they are doing and who have a national mission. Look. We are committed to building a world-class $1 trillion economy in the next five years. And you can't do it the way things are being wrong. How is present. the ADC government going to do it? How are we going to do it? Yeah. We have four pillars. Okay. First, we are going to enforce the peace. Because without peace and security, nothing can be done. Two, we are going to invest in people. People are the new wealth of nations. We are going to invest in our young people. We are going to invest in training and skills. We are going to invest in research and innovation. And the third P is power. Power and infrastructures. From, from day one, I will pass an executive order to the effect that all government buildings must have solar panels on top of them. And we are not going to import the solar panels. We're going to bring manufacturers from abroad. Russia today has the best technology. Why do you want to bring manufacturers from abroad when you have universities of science and technology in Nigeria, when you have engineering, science and technology and engineering agencies of government? Well, uh, some are research institutions. Why go and, you know, expand the scarce foreign exchange again to bring in technology that uh, is everywhere? Why? Is it everywhere? Would, the, that, I mean, not, would that not be squander no, mania again no, 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 for no. the scarce resources? Do you know of a Nigerian company that has invented a better, a new solar technology? Do you know of one? They're there. I'm, tell no, I, no, I, I am, no. I'm telling you that wouldn't your party, wouldn't it be better to use agencies of government, research institutions, creation of the federal government to propagate this? I think you are asking the wrong question. You, no. are, asking it, you are asking the wrong question <laughs> because you are no. asking as if it is an either or. It's not a binary issue. When I say we are going, listen to me, when I say we are going to bring manufacturers, I don't mean I'm going to exclude or downgrade the local ones. Mm. We will bring the, Russia today has the best technology in solar panel, in solar technology. They have the best. Their, their rate of efficiency is almost 70% compared to the Chinese that are hovering around 30, 40 percent, uh, 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 and the Japanese maybe 50 percent. The Russians have, because it's the coldest, you know, part of the, the world. The world yeah. So they've had to, to go that extra mile to be able to extract solar energy. And I will partner with them or with others that are equally good. And I will come here and I will partner, they will partner with local uh, industries and local researchers you know, to train our people in the manufacture of the solar panels, because the easiest solution is just simply to import them. But that will not help us very much. We need them to install here, to build the technology here, and to train our young people. Thousands will be trained on manufacturing of solar panels, installation of solar panels, and uh, maintenance of the solar panels. Think of what that will do. Uh, 
for the power sector. I want you now, rural Dr. Schools, yeah, Dr. Rural uh, clinics. Uh, Melafi Obadiah, yes, in one sentence, because uh, your time is almost up here. Tell Nigerians what, why they should vote for ADC in the upcoming uh, uh, February elections. Why they should vote for you as president? You should vote for us for three reasons. Number one, we are new and we are different. We are totally different from these old, recycled, corrupt politicians. Bring them back again and you're going to destroy this country. They are on the way to destroying your country already. And two? Number two, we have what it takes. Our blueprint is very original. We have an original approach. I mentioned three Ps. The last P, of course, is prosperity. Right. We're going to ensure prosperity. So peace, people, power, and prosperity. Fantastic. The third goal, the third reason why you should, uh, you should vote for ADC is because your humble servant, Obadiah Meilafia, is the leader of that party. Look, we have not defrauded this country. We have the fear of God in us. We have the fire in the belly. We will fight for the rights of our people. We will take our country back. Not only that, all people in government will have a performance contract. Fantastic. You will perform. That's if you are not performing, you are out. Thank you very much, Dr. Melafia Obadiah. He is the presidential candidate of the ADC. The ADC uh, metamorphosed from the third force. Thanks, uh, like always, for being with we, us we, we on are Nigeria. Th we are the third force. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from Nigeria on Nigeria 2019. And we wish you all the best in the forthcoming general election. Thank you, sir. You're watching Nigeria, the road to 2019. Plenty more still ahead, including we assess the People's Democratic Party's readiness to defeat the ruling All Progressives Congress. Stay with us. Welcome to Nigeria, the road to 2019. I am Christian Nogodo. Thanks for staying with us. And now, to assess the readiness of the People's Democratic Party to grab power from the ruling APC, we'll be speaking to the Senior Special Assistant on Public Affairs to former President Goodluck Jonathan. I remember he was even uh, the spokesperson to uh, former President Olusha Gwambasanjo as well. Doyin Okukwe. He joins me now in the studios. Thank you, Dr. Doyin Okukwe. I was just talking that uh, I'm sure you can't remember when you last uh, entered the theater. Uh, well, it's quite a while. You know, the Bible says, for a while you will see me, for a while you will not see me. So now you're seeing me again. So you've been doing the disappearing act, right? Correct. And uh, now. Uh, to the, you know, uh, tough now of politics, two weeks, uh, two months rather, to the presidential elections. And uh, it doesn't seem that the PDP's house is in order and not at, uh, putting issues straight. Uh, I was going to use a word that uh, is already in the uh, political sphere so that they don't see me as being partisan here. And APC, they are waxing stronger, bringing out strong economic indices to, you know, buttress uh, why Nigerians should trust them and vote for them. Why should Nigerians trust you again? <laughs> um, thank you very much. In the first instance, uh, I don't know, maybe this is a professional tactics. Your two parallel questions are unreal. Uh, What's unrealistic <laughs> about it? One is that you know we don't we don't have any PDP don't have we don't have any problem whatsoever at all, and definitely the APC is not coming up with anything significant or anything that anybody can use to back up a claim for anybody to vote for APC. Now, for a fact, I tell you, the PDP is ready, and we're fully prepared. We do not have, as you can see, we do not have the internal rancors that has bedeviled the, P, uh, the APC. Uh, that are they used to have it. Yeah, we, we had that all, you know, we had that all in the past, yeah. and you know, uh, but by the time we came out of Port Harcourt, you know, we came as a, as one solid, firm, united, focused, 
and rebranded political party. You know, with a machinery that can crush any party in this country. You know, the unity, you know, look, we, if you look at the former and the last election, the last election in 2014, Buhari did not win that election. We lost it. You know, because Buhari consistently scores some figures over the last 15 or so or 16 years. You know, usually in the entire of the North, he scores about 12 million votes and then scattered all over the, other, the remaining uh, three zones, another 3 million votes, making maximum of 15. He has always scored between 12 and 15 million. So he di and he didn't go beyond that. We, that, you know, PDP that, you know, used to score 22 million, 24 million, we came down to 12 million votes. So you see, it is our people, uh, you know, for whatever reason, but a failure to call, I mean, to, I mean maybe when we didn't mobilize them enough. They were not, uh, you know, uh, they didn't feel, uh, so, you know, they didn't feel committed enough to come out to vote, especially in the East. We lost over 12 million votes. But Buhari neither gained nor lose anything. He didn't lose anything. He didn't gain anything. So we lost that election. Okay? And, we're, you know, we've been going around talking to our people and appeasing everybody. And we're coming together as one humongous machine. APC is a non-starter. It's a, it was originally a contraption that was put together by conspiracy, you know, without any solid foundation or thoughts about governance or government. As you can see, they came into government unexpectedly. They could not form a government. They could not start a government for s over six months. Well, they blame that on uh, your former principal. That, that is uh, the he <laughs> never he never gave uh, them a uh, handover note. <laughs> no, they one. were serious number about one, it. Number one, number yeah. one, that is not true. Because I even, st I mean, I was part and parcel of those who prepared the handover notes. There was an elaborate ceremony where a handover note was given to, uh, I think, uh, uh, Alaji Ahmed, Ahmed Joda. Okay, a huge, a huge document. But, you know, that is not surprising and it's neither here nor there. APC is a government that has celebrated and entrenched, you know, uh, indecency and deception. They lie about everything. They lie for everything. And people are just generally fed up. They are not lying about uh, how they said they have, you know, revitalized the Nigerian agricultural sector with 12 million farmers who uh, the Central Bank Reads Anchor Boras program have acknowledged exist and have, you know, turned the scale against the huge import uh, food builds of Nigerians to one that uh, the country is becoming self-sufficient and uh, secured with food. Nobody is believing that story. Because let me also tell you, if you, you know, I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just in the, it's just in the poor view of human beings to have short memories. You remember that the most celebrated minister in, uh, in Jun uh, Good Luck, Abele Jonathan's government was Adeshina. Adeshina was, a, you know, was Excellent, it was, it, it, he performed excellently. You will recall when he was discussing about wallet, uh, you know, this wallet scheme for fertilizers, he had on his database over 10 million farmers. So maybe Buhari has added 2 million to that, and they are now celebrating that as, as, as everything that they celebrate. They, op I mean, they commissioned the uh, airport uh, a couple of days ago, mm. an airport that, you know, we conceptualized. We paid the, you know, the, the equity to the Chinese. We constructed the airport. They are celebrating uh, the Abuja, Abuja, Abuja Rail, light Abuja rail. Light Rail, that was already commissioned. They are celebrating the Ajakuta, uh, Ajakuta Rail. So, uh, to, to, to it it that was 95%. I was there. You know, this is just a silly administration. It, they don't know nothing. That, 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 they is, did. Quite, that is quite uh, I mean harsh. It. Yeah. I mean it. I mean it. I mean, even the even the the, 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 the budget that was prepared and um, that was presented a couple of days ago is full of fallacies and you know things that are not true. What what are these fallacies? Because uh, the, the, the dam, present the, the present me, came with me. facts and figures, excuse you know, backed me. with all excuse economic me. analysis excuse and indices. Okay, he, he mentioned about the dam in the southeast. The the the, the internet is awash with somebody who had gone there physically. And taking this picture and taking a video is on the internet. I still saw it 
yesterday. Nothing is grass has overgrown that place. There are a lot of roads that were mentioned that has nothing has ever happened at all. Some people are deliberate. You know, I believe because I like President Buhari and I have a lot of respect for him. I believe there are fit columnists in his administration who just want to ridicule him. Because some people just went and packed all sorts of lies and nonsense in a budget. Speech. Well, those in, gov those, those in government would uh, say your son too is a fifth columnist for going to join. <laughs> no, for going to join no, uh, President no. uh, is, Buhari is, and uh, giving is, him his support. This is not something that is unusual. If you put so, up so your you mind, you want to say that as Ukoku, politics. Ukoku, you remember Ukoku? Ukoku, I mean his son was in the opposite party in against his father. You know, you know, I trained my son. He went to the best schools in the I mean in, in, in the world. He went to London School of Economics. He's free to, you know, like the body in the air to take a political decision. I, that is why I spent so much money. And if he's taking him. the one you consider a suicidal, what do good. you do you as a invite father? Him, you invite him and I here to come and defend our parties. We will do so. It's not a problem. You know, you know, he believes in something. I believe in another one. That is not an Have issue. Have you discussed this before? We are, you know, we talk all the time. I mean, face to face. He's my son. He's yeah, my abso first son. Absolutely. But have you tabled this? Have you asked him? He has what, always... What are his convictions? He, he uh, must really be convic convic convinced of the goodness the, of the performance of the president. Let me tell you. Yeah. My son, like many youths, are highly, very vulnerable and gullible. They are intelligent and they have been very educated. So they look at things at face value. They look at a general, purposely to be somebody who has integrity, somebody who is poor, somebody who does and not. And well schooled to went to some of the best military schools. Who? The president. That's what my, oh, most, most of our generals want to be best. That is not an issue. Mm. That's, I mean, you know, you want to make military schools and all that. But, you know, there are still issues about certificates and all that. So don't let's bring I this think Wayak has settled that. Don't you think so? <sighs> if you say so. I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm asking you. No, no. You I'm are not one, saying You are so. the one who brought the issue of best military schools. And I told you that so many yeah, generals some of the Nigeria qualities, the likes Bangida, of your sons and his eggs will and be looking at. Yeah. They went to, you know, fantastic first class military schools okay Absolutely. so that is nothing extraordinary mm -hmm. but the point i'm trying to make to you is this these young people all right they you know they've just come back from school and they're idealistic and they believe that their country is corrupt and their leadership is corrupt and you know somehow the media and APC have been able to prop up somebody to say that you know this is you know a personality that is beyond corruption which is not true but you know so these are the things that are you know, but with time, you know, with time, many of them are beginning, we are reaching them, we are talking to them, many of them are beginning to see the other side. I mean, if I were to judge, this is perhaps the most corrupt government the Niger and this, this country has ever had. And it's the most liberal in the sense that it does not discipline its own. You know, you know, you, know, you, can, you, know, you can chase after corruption, yes. But, you know, if, we, if as much as you blame and we blame uh, 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 I mean, uh, President uh, Jonathan, President Jonathan sent away a minister for corrupt charges. You know, people were you know were relieved of the offices for corrupt charges. People, governors were tried. Okay, in this administration, you tell me, in spite of the who and cry, who has ever been taken to court or punished or? Or, 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 or investigated but the, for corruption the, the former charges. SGF, uh, Babache, was investigated and relieved of his job. So, you know, is that all? Somebody stole money in Nigeria? I didn't steal any money. I am appearing in court on the 18th of January. But, Babache, but, hold on, Babache stole over 200 something million naira. And you know he's working about. He's not going to any court. I'm sure. I'm sure the uh, so you uh, know his the my, institutions are still investigating so him. That I must go to court quickly for collecting ten million naira every month to run an office. And Baba Chair, who actually defrauded the government of Nigeria, you know, has nothing to say. Has no, not, no, none, to none, none is been proven in court yet. Yes, Yours so, is not been proven. I agree. I'm just saying. You mm. know, if you look at the rate and the, the speed at by which I am going to court. You should also be expect that something very similar should have happened to Babache. Nothing has happened. And there are so many. Don't let us, you know, look, this government is corrupt. This government condones corruption. This government is sunk in corruption. Any government that allows 
a disparity of up to 10, 20, 30 naira, all right, in the foreign exchange regimes, is a corrupt government. Some people are inside making 30 naira every day on every dollar that, you know, that, that the CBN sells. And that is not corruption. This, you know, look, when you say, uh, 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 not Obasan John, when you say that uh, uh, Jonathan is corrupt, let's look at it, you know, unemotionally. Was the Minister of Finance under Jonathan with the Koji and Wajala, uh, was it corrupt? No. Was the Ministry of fin I mean, of uh, Agriculture, was it corrupt? No. Was education corrupt? No. You know, was... Uh, was uh, uh, How about the Petroleum Ministry? That's what I'm telling you. Petroleum Ministry, there's a lot of corruption. In this, co in this administration, too... How about the other... Hold on, sir. No, I am the, I'm, you have been, I'm the one that you are interviewing. Yeah. So let me develop my point. What I'm telling you is that corruption... <laughs> You know, it's like a mirror image in this administration too. The petroleum, uh, the petroleum ministry during, during Jonathan was corrupt. The petroleum ministry during Buhari is corrupt. So, so it's, right? it's a vicious circle it's not a of, vicious of, circle. of uh, political it's not leaders a vicious in this circle. Circle. isn't it? We have corruption in in, 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 in the former administration. You, you people dwelled so much on subsidy. Look at the scale today. Isn't it a merry-go-round thing? The subsidy that Jonathan paid. Is pittance compared to what we are paying now? Billions? Uh, uh, you no, call billions? That, pittance? No, no. Now they are paying trillions. Now they are paying trillions. I mean, last year I had. I mean, you know, it was up, 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 almost eight hundred and fifty billion. Do you understand my point? To, even this, you know, this was when these are the same people who said if if that they don't know what subsidy is all about and that subsidy is a scam. <coughs> now the, this Excuse government, the, you know, the budget that has just been read, one billion dollars was voted for subsidy and now there's a problem this subsidy now is only is only going to uh, nmpc all right so so nmpc as it is right now is a cesspool of corruption it is very clear today you know we don't know how nmpc is you know where did they get funds to pay for this subsidy you know, in the, in that the last... Happened, uh, it was during, not in the budget. That was, happened during it, Jonathan's it uh, time, too. And, and you got uh, hear, prize water to, to, to... You got prize water to come and do an audit that uh, was not uh, up, uh, uh, spot on. Who said? You? Can you say that what prize water... Did even, the national, not, even the National Assembly, the legislators. You had, you had majority then. Professionally, prize water is a reputable uh, accounting uh, firm in the world. All right, and no, no contrary uh, 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 idea has been espoused by any other person. So, innuendos, personal feelings are not important. Or at least we had the courage to call in an arbiter to come and see what has happened here. So, okay, um, let's look at. PDP, yes, you've tasted power, you've uh, seen all the frailties and the shortcomings and how you lost power. What are those things that you're putting in place to regain the power? Because you talked about a damaged economy, the scale of corruption right now, and the rest. Tell Nigerians why they should trust you, why they should vote uh, your party members in, your presidential candidate and all others, you know, uh, running for elections. Thank you very much. In 2019, the choice between Nigerians is very clear. It's a choice between continuing to vote for a government that has shown, you know, crass incompetence, cluelessness, that has, 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 has lost grip of the economy, Every in index, every index, economic index in this country today, pertaining to this country today, is on the negative. Inflation has risen from maybe 18 to 23. But the government is very transparent, allowing one of its agencies to, you know, no, no, the government, is not, the government is not very transparent. The, the MBS. That, no, 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 no. You know, that is, excuse me, that is what is expected of any government agency saddled with that responsibility. To do that would be to subvert the sovereignty of the country. So what Kale is doing is correct, is normal. It's not the government, 
It's not government that is doing it. He is doing his job. You know, we've lost 13 million jobs. We are still losing more jobs. So Nigerians must decide. This time around, 2019. You, you called. Can I? You can I? Can I? Can I? Finish? Okay, go on. Yeah. Nigeria must take a decision. You asked me a question. I'm go developing on. it. Nigeria must take a decision between voting for another four years of hunger, of pain, of pervasive and increasing perplexing poverty. Hmm. All right, insecurity, killings, arbitrary killings and uh, assassination. We just saw one. A couple of days ago, how many more we still have to die be before we, you know, we wrestle? It's not new before in this, the Nigerian this, space, is it? Before this is government, it new? before these people, look, the, there's a need to bring hope to the co to the people of this country. How about Dikibo? How what, about Harry Marshall? That is what that is what article is coming with. This government needs somebody who understands the economy. During the debate of the of the of the vice presidency, of the vice president, you saw it very clearly that Oshimajo had no clue whatsoever. He didn't have, you know, this Oshimajo is somebody I know very well. He's my friend, my younger brother. You know, he went to Gobi College. He had been receiving, uh, he has been receiving uh, 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 honors and awards from debates from Gobi College. On that day, on the economy, he felt flat like like you know, like a flappy sleeper. Anybody can because anybody can have butterflies. No, no, uh, this, during, is not, this is not uh, butterfly. Uh, like, this yeah, is snakes. In the tummy, yeah. It's worse than butterfly. It's, these are snakes in his tummy because there was nothing to say. And this is the man that is sitting on top of our economy. It is not a surprise that you know the economy is not going anywhere. You cannot give what you don't have when you compare it with our own ticket as a man Excuse of me. international uh, repute law, in, law, in legal, law. Yeah. that is law yeah you know we are talking about economy mm. international reputation in law does not put uh, food on the table and going about about in uh, going about in in, uh, in market places and you know dangling ten ten thousand to uh, to market women is which uh, which economic policy is that you know where has it been done you know, how does, when you give a woman 10,000 naira, you know, what did the Chinese say? said, you know, teach me how to fish instead of giving me fish to eat. If you give me fish to eat, I'll have dinner and that's the end of it. But if you teach me how to fish, when you are gone, I will continue to fish and I will continue to, to maintain my family. This government is a joke. The government has, you know, a, 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 a jocular approach to very serious issues. The, the presidency is totally pathetic. They are unconcerned and disconnected from the suffering of the masses. The president does not know about many things that is going on. His wife came on television and said the president is not in charge. He's in, I mean, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Buhari said two henchmen are the people that are running the country. And I don't well, see... We've always had cabals, even during uh, your me, two principal slides, we had excuse cabals. Me, excuse me. Let us deal with the present. Nobody can speak. That will be in a minute, Dr. Okukwe. Yes, sir. Go on. Oh, okay. Let us deal with the present. Mrs. Buari, with no gun to her head, came to the Nigerian public and said, Look, you guys have you got to fight for yourself. Because right now, my husband has lost grip of this administration. And some two people who we do not know are the ones running the economy. We don't even know whether they are foreigners. Excuse me? Is that what Nigerians you want to vote for the same government? that you don't know who will run the administration, a government of, I mean, in, in, in a country of 200 million people, you know, with, you know, with so many youth and all that, we have a poverty population of 87 million, we have a youthful unemployment of over 26, 26%. Excuse me, we are in dangerous and perilous times. And, you know, only God and PDP will save this country in, oh. 20, in 2019. All right, uh, Dr. Dolin Okukwe, wish we had all the time more, you know, to take you uh, on, uh, so, on some other issues that we have really not finished. But uh, your, your, your people out there will be looking at you as a great submission, a good talker, a medical practitioner that is now uh, very deep into politics and the rest. Eh? We'll we, we definitely, I've we'll, always been. our rise news will definitely get you and your son on this table to come, <laughs> out, to come and discuss, you know, your perspectives 
veto the two presidential uh, candidates and but politics I thought, generally. I thought this, my program was for 30 minutes. Yes, we've done 30 minutes. You're kidding. You don't know? Oh. <laughs> Your time is out. <laughs> Dr. Donyo Kukwe is the former senior special uh, advisor to former president Goodluck Jonathan on public affairs and one time uh, essay uh, media and public affairs special advisor to, to uh, former president Chief Olusemi Obasanjo. Thanks very much for being with us on this nice program. To be here. Nice and well, to be here. that's it for this edition of Nigeria: The Road to 2019. Join us again for a fresh edition tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, I am Christian Ogodo. Bye bye.